Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, and I don't care if you're not a fan of Road Dog because I'm not either. Well, only on Tuesdays. But with that being said, <laughs> this is Resolution Next. I am your host, the man with a good head on my shoulders because I have no neck to support it. I am the other man of the other hour, the Nicholas with the AC Smooth. Along with me, I have the team of the Golden Warrior Isaac, along with the rule of all hosts. Donovan and the Mitt Raja. Mitt, what's going on, y'all? Not too much. I'm sure. Hey, I hear that. Just, 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 just for this, man. Hey, that's great. Just for this, and I, and we're also in the presence of your Facebook champion, AC Smooth. Give this Hi. man a round of applause. Hi. I got, I, I keep waving at my computer. I, I, I'm starting to get. I'm trying to get used to this. Uh, this webcam. Like I'm waving at my computer. Like my webcam is on my computer. Meanwhile, it's like sitting, looking right directly at me. My, my computer is like slanted from me. <laughs> Let me know how that looks. Hey y'all. Hey, I can actually see my pick. Um, my Dragon Ball um poster a lot clearer now. Yeah, man. Thank you. Um, um, what did you think of my Frieza poster? Isaac thinks it's cool. Frieza is cool yeah. a- a- anyway. So look, man, I'm, I'm all I'm all for Frieza. You know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna post this for anybody that wants to see it. I I recommend anybody that's a fan of the old school and just wants to buy this if you watch Super. Um, right after I get through all these nice ladies on my phone. <laughs> Lots of ladies on my phone. That that is the best. Like that is like cooking to a club, man. What are you humming, Isaac? I actually made that and sold it. I sold it on Amazon. That is that is the that is clean, man. And oh, boy, Anthony, I do. Anthony, I do. Look. Shout out the people who were active on Guilty last night. Those were some great fan discussions. Hey, they got they got real for a second. I'm so like, I'm so I saw the I saw the view man. Sky having uh big on James Yeah, James King was getting into it with everybody and then started making like some really airtight arguments about Becky Lynch. Man, what's what's new? <laughs> what's going on, Jamie? Uh, my finish, my finish, my finish, my finish. Yeah. Hey, Mitt, how do you like that picture? That post, that picture I got on the wall. I like it. Oreo, Ore. What am I doing? I don't know why I had David Otunga's theme song stuck in my head for a second. I'm sorry. Next thing you know, this man's gonna be singing some G Unit. Hey dog, don't hey, don't sit here and, and dog G unit. Look, man, fifty cent. Many men is my song though. I don't care anybody says many men is my song. What's wrong with G unit? <laughs> there is nothing wrong with G unit, okay? See, these guys are assuming an insult about G unit, so that should tell you everything you need to know about their opinion of G unit. I just said next thing you know he's gonna sing G unit, and they start over here defending G unit like. Like somebody non-existently said something to insult G Unit. I'm more of a dipset person myself, but still, I, I like G Unit. I don't. I, I honestly don't mind G Unit. Yeah, I was always a dipset person. I like Juvenile, but most people don't even know who that is anymore. Oh, you mean the guy that was taking over the nine nine and two thousands? Any rappers are anymore. Yo, you'd be surprised what like kids nowadays don't know. Yeah, I, yeah, they listen to rap songs, but they don't even know who the fuck's singing. What's the name of the song? Like this, it was a kid that was he was singing. Um, what was um was it snap? No, it was was it Snappy Fingers? Oh my gosh, who doesn't know who sings that song? 
No, it wasn't Snap Your Fingers. It was it was another party song. It was another party anthem that came out while we were in middle school, Isaac. Uh, we we had we had a lot of party anthems though. So I mean, it, <laughs> like 2007 around that time, that was the year. Of, that was like the era of party anthems. You're a waste. <laughs> Yeah, we, we it was like that time you had like snap your fingers, lean over the rock. With, no, it was it was Laffy Taffy. It was it was Laffy Taffy, and he just started singing it. I looked at him, I was like, "Do you know who sings that?" No, I was like, "Stop singing! You don't know you weren't born when that song came out." And so it was like he was like, I know who that is, and he says some some new person that remit that like dubbed the song or something like that, like some techno. You know how you know how like a lot of DJs like to make like dubstep versions of songs and stuff like that. And so that's where he had heard it from. Although to be fair, to be fair, some of the dubstep versions of the new old songs are pretty dumb. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm not. I'm not doubt. I'm not saying that it's not. I mean, it's true. But I mean, hey, I'm I'm not sure if you all are into go go, but uh, my my time in Norfolk State has got me into go go. And um, uh, Adele's Hello. There's a go go version of that song. I would never listen to Adele's version, but if I want to hear that song, I'm listening to the go go version every single time. Are you kidding me? Uh, there's a Brock Lesnar parody of there's a Brock Lesnar parody of, of, of Hello with the universal title. I mean, obviously that's that's going on right now. I mean, I heard of yeah, Hello. I was excited. Like, like you know the song Baby Shark. Like I won't listen to Baby Shark unless it's the Yank style version of it. Anthony, y'all know what I'm talking about. Oh, I listen to, I listen to that Baby Shark, the the original. The uh, R and B version, the churchy version. I, I was, but Baby Shark is my song. That is the song of 2018. Don't at me. Church, church version. My son, my son, my son. You know what? That before we get to before we get to what we need to be talking about. Uh, I was walking around the mall yesterday, Chesby Square, the dead one. And you know it's a, it's this it's this little kiosk right in front of the food court, and they sell like graphic T-shirts. They got backwoods shirts, they had Fortnite shirts, and right on the floor, they had a baby shark shirt, a, bro, a mommy shark shirt, a daddy shark shirt, a grandma shark shirt, and a grandpa shark shirt. I was like, this is going too far. We need to slow down. Like <laughs> yeah, this is going too far. And somebody's gonna buy it. And it, it was some random kiosk sitting right in front of the food court at the deadest mall in Virginia. It is. I mean, okay, my fault. The second deadest mall in Virginia. What's the deadest? Military Circle. That's not even. That's I see no lies here. <laughs> I see no lies. Mil- Military Circle and then Chesapeake Square. So basically, the mall is as dead as the excitement at TLC. Yes, actually, worse, worse, and, and that's as bad as it sounds. Worse. It's as dead as it was at TLC. It's as dead as it was at TLC, save for the last thirty minutes, because you can't. I want. I want. I dare. Want wait, to wait, 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 wait! They're taking their shoes off. Hold, hold the phone. They're taking their shoes. I'm watching NXT UK. And they have their shoes off right now. Is that Gibson over here? Yes. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is hilarious. <laughs> this is my first time seeing this. And Anthony. Anthony. Yes. Dude, if you think you enjoy doing heel heat, you need to. Or uh, UK, these and I, and I watch it uncensored. I watched the the original broadcast for Britain version. 
it's even worked. They censor a lot of fan chants because the fans literally drown out a lot of the commentary and shit. <laughs> I am dead right now. Like. I bet you- I bet you they censored the crowd. They probably do it. Plus, it's pre-recorded, so I believe it. I need to rewind. They said they do that to cut down. Anthony, I love how you thought I was kidding when I said what I said. Oh, no, I, ne- I don't think I ever thought you were kidding, but I just needed to see it for myself. And it's like, I, I just looked up on my TV, and I just see people taking their shoes off and holding it up in the air. Like, this is what I see. Yes, I know my shoe is dirty. Don't don't judge me. <laughs> Once it comes up, I I, I sh- I'm not sure. Are, are we going to be able to do that? Because I know if I sh- if I hear if they hear the sounds, they like to be picky with that. And plus, um, we got the um little motion going on with the um hill heat video. Oh, hold on. You see this? No, they really, they really. My fault. Isn't it isn't it like something like some backstory behind why they hate Gibson so much? I think that's it. I think it's just the fact that he's from Liverpool that they hate him so much. Yeah, that too. Because remember, remember, um, Ari Devari when um Ari Devari and Sean Devari they they had their appearance at uh at Greatest Royal Rumble. You remember the heat they got too. Well, I mean, I was, I mean, over here in, in the UK, I feel like it's more territorial. Like, I guess they just depending on who you are, they just meet everybody in Liverpool. Yeah, but I mean, the, the way the the way the Devaris had it, I mean the. So, the Saudis hate uh, Iranians, so. So when I when I saw that happen, I knew exactly what was going to go down. All right, so we're going to start off with UK, or we're going to go into 205 first? We're going to go UK, man, shoot. Uh, you know All right, this. you got it. Go ahead. You're the man. Uh, the first match we had was starting off because we came from, this was the uh, October 13th and 14th tapings from Plymouth. First match we saw Jason De- or Jordan Devlin versus Wild Boar, Mike Hitchman. Uh, Jordan Devlin pulled off the win here. Good job for him. This, this wasn't really like a super high caliber match, but it was good. Then we had Fabian Ike. Ak- Fabian Ike. Fabian Ike. I defeated Eddie Ryan. Again, nothing, nothing really, nothing really great here. And then we had the match that I really got excited for. We had Mustache Mountain taking on Saxon Huxley and Tyson Tebow. I'm never gonna get over his name being Tyson Tebow because every time I think of that, I think they need to throw a Tyson's chicken ad out there. I was thinking of a steak, and I've been wanting steak for the last few days. So you're just making me even, you're making my craving for steak even higher. Thank you. But um, I mean, is there any doubt who won this match? Do I even need to like just say? I mean, it was it was a great match. Mustache, they're great. Mustache, oh, did he win with that ball hammer? Not the ball hammer, burning hammer. Uh, and Anthony, the girl you're thinking. Now that I remember, I couldn't. I, I never. I think her name was Morgan. Something. It's Charlie Morgan. Okay, there you go. The, the kid with the black and yellow. Black and gold. My fault. 
I think I like the cuter black and gold better than uh, whatever her name was. I'm going, to, I'm going with that. But then we had Rhea Ripley defending her NXT UK women's title against Isla Dawn. Ooh, Over nice. Rhea Ripley obviously retained because Isla Dawn hasn't really been winning. That's interesting that they uh, went and get. That's interesting for her to give for her, for them to give her a shot like that. Then with her not really getting. She, she, she lost last week. Right. They're just they're just kind of turning the motions and trying to put title defenses out. Is what it really boils down to. Yeah, I, I think after their ta- after their first takeover, they're really going to start hitting the ground running. Because if you, if you really think about it, NXT, the U, United States NXT, they didn't really start hitting the ground running until that first takeover hit. I think that the first takeover was when they had the uh, the match between Cesaro and Sami Zayn. Yeah, it was. So a- after after that, I think that was the match that really that match really put NXT on the map. So they they just need that match, and they're gonna be set. I think the first takeover is when we'll get it. Yeah. And then possibly having... Defeated Charlie Morgan. <laughs> sorry, sorry. And I, 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 was about to, I was about to add, and possibly having Walter make his debut that night soon, that's really going to help jump things. Hey, Ned, why don't you go have a chop match with Walter? I'll edit that chop match with Morris and Jimmy and Walter. I don't know. That's a that's a double that's a double edged sword there, man. <laughs> you know what? You know what, man? You need to go try out for New Japan. Then. What are you gonna tell me? Go slap go slap more Minoru Suzuki. Go. No, just tap his ass. There you go. Just, just tap him on the ass. Good job, man. Oh man, he's trying to get you killed, dog. Out. I wouldn't take it. <laughs> he said he'd rather fight Minoru. So he'd rather get chopped. I'm not by Minoru Suzuki, then hot damn uh, Walter. Minoru Suzuki will kill you. I mean, yeah, that's a double edged sword. That's <laughs> the Minoru Suzuki gun song is Suzuki Nitron will kill you. In the spirit, in the spirit of um, Birdman, do you want to die or do you want to not be alive? <laughs> All right, the next, <laughs> the next match was James. Drake and Zach Gibson take the shoes off, <laughs> uh, defeating Flash Morgan Webster and Mandrews. Yeah, I just finished that match. It was. By the way, that was a damn good match, Anthony. You want to comment? Uh, I just saw Fabian Eitner got involved there. Um, Mandrews hit a uh, shooting star press, and I don't know what the finisher is that Zach um that Gibson has on Mandrews, and he taps out. And um, if you hate if you hate Zach Gibson, take shoes off. Take shoes off. If you hate Zach Gibson, take shoes off. I love a good heel too, but you know, even even a even a heel fan loves getting worked sometimes. I that's the thing that's the thing about me. I enjoy being worked. If if you can work me, I feel like you just gained so much respect for me just as the fact that you like Champa. Champa really work has been working me a lot lately. So that's why I say Champa's the greatest hell right now. Uh, man, you need you need you know what? I hope I hope you go to Ohio soon. Go to Ohio <laughs> and go tell go tell uh, Zach Gibson that he's gonna have to go to Ohio. I got Desmond. I got Desmond got my back. Gil Words. Seriously, Anthony, if you can at all be on that show, I want you there. I got to check my schedule. We'll see, though. If you can't be there, Mitt, I want you there. One of y'all. Don't care. And, uh, and whoever, whichever one of y'all it is, I want y'all to, I want y'all to ask him impact questions. <laughs> 
I think Jamie's going to be there. He's going to ask all the impact questions. Jamie, Jamie, I'm depending on you, man. Fan feedback. Ask Chris Dillsworth what he thinks of the the uh, alley. Too young to I think Jamie's going to. Yeah, Jamie's gonna ask all the impact questions, so he'll he'll definitely be there. Ain't that right, Jamie? <laughs> Jamie, Jamie, I'm depending on you, man. Fan feedback. Ask Chris Dillsworth what he thinks of the the uh, alley. Too young to realize. That's it, Jamie. Jamie's gonna be there. Ain't that right, Jamie? <laughs> <laughs> and def it look, I, I'll I'll probably be, I will definitely be watching, so I'll be there. I'm gonna be picking with Chris there, and I'll, I'll be on his show later on that evening too. I kind of wanted to get you because me and me and him are gonna me and uh Rory said we'll just give retro break because I'm gonna announce at the top of the show we're just gonna fast forward to the dates that are close to what we're doing. Yeah, because I know right now y'all are pretty much doing like all the the uninteresting things. I think y'all at the point where Raw was, Raw was still an hour this time that y'all were um, um are covering right. Yeah, so y'all y'all had like the really stuff, and then it doesn't really get good into the atmosphere because like you had some of the worst, some of the worst shows in Raw history were in that period of time where they were just hitting two hours, and then um, and Nitro Nitro was just getting going. I mean, they had like four dark matches. Tonight. Yeah, so it, Eddie, it's it's really nothing going on right now with that. Eddie Rowe and Dean Malenko were in a lot of dark matches. Jamie said he wants Sleepy Eyes to go in the retro show. Oh my god. <laughs> Size and Isaac. <sighs> All right, let's get back to uh let's get back to uh UK. All right, so back. <laughs> Nina Samuels defeating Killer Kelly. Woo! I love me some Killer Kelly. And I'm watching that right now, too. <laughs> yes, this Nina Samuels, Samuels girl is pretty interesting as well. Fickle. Yeah. He will watch Impact. All right. So what's next after uh, Ke Killer Kelly match? Joe. Joe who? Joe Dish. Joe Dish is being moved all over the place. <laughs> Somebody's washing dishes. Just, just go. What are you doing? Look, you can't cut your hair over the dishes. All right, go ahead. So yeah, it was it was Joe Coffee versus Travis Banks. Ooh, I like Travis Banks. I love Travis Banks. He's fucking great. I've been a fan of his. Um, uh, Joe Coffey won the match, and then we saw, then we had some interaction. Then we got the Coffey Brothers and Wolfgang versus Mustache Mountain and Travis Banks. I like it. Mustache Mountain and Travis Banks got the win here. Good match. Solid, solid tag team. I really wonder. I really wonder what they're going to do with this tag division now. That's that's really the interesting thing that I'm looking forward to. And I'm I'm, I'm gonna bring up tag scenes one more time tonight. And that's when we get two or five. So um, continue. Yeah, speaking of tag teams, Joe Coffee and Joe Dish are going to be teaming up. I think that's why they started the, um, the, try to change their hearts with tag teams because the Bucks said no. They both, they, they both 
kick this page. I know you got nothing for that, Anthony. <laughs> Don't kick the H. Kick the H out. So, uh, the speculation is that's what's going to happen. Now we're getting the clock ticking down for SCU. Although Christopher Daniels will still be making a Appearances for Ring of Honor in January. I'm just reiterating that because Anthony actually cares about that news. I mean, yeah, he ha he doesn't want to be part of the the most fickle crowds he's ever been in. No, he, he wants to enjoy the best himself ever. He says Charlotte and Iowa ain't got nothing on the BME. So that is that is UK, Anthony. All right. On to 205. Fickle Pickles. On to 205 Live. And before we uh, go to preface 205 Live, I want to bring up this idea. All right. So we're we, – and no, no, this is not my original idea. Somebody – I got this from somebody else. I can't – I can't put it – I can't put a name to who I got it from. I've heard different ideas. But um, we know, we know that uh, 205 Live has started to gain more traction. People are – more eyes are on the product now. And there are, there's a lot of talent there. So I was in I, – I was thinking, based off what I've heard from other people, what if instead of bringing in just a simple tag team division to 205 Live, what if they do a trios or a six man tag title? Like the, like the IWGP never opened. Yes. Is that still is that still a thing? It is still a thing. Yes. I, I have, okay, Anthony. I have a question for you and Isaac. I mean, if you want to join in, feel free. What would you feel? To having the 205 always open the title. Since they like having like some of the main roster crossover, NXT, and even get some UK involved. What if we had the never, instead of uh, like the 205 always open weight, where you have different people from different brands crossing over and teaming up with 205 guys? I think we're close. That would definitely work because now we're starting to see that these guys are starting to really get more involved in um, interactions with the rest of the main roster. When when to, when when the Cruiserweight division had just started, you saw a little to no interaction with the main roster guys. The only interaction you saw was Enzo. And then they had the one time the fashion police arrested uh, Gulak. And that was it. I, I hated that segment. Oh, yeah, I hated it. I hated the passion because uh, you can't shoot my dad that way. My dad. Um, no, he's not up here. I want more PowerPoint presentations, you pieces of shit writers. Give me more PowerPoint presentations. <laughs> I agree with that. I do want some more of that. Um, but we're gonna talk. We're gonna talk about Gulak some more later on. But I, that's that's something that you could really think about because I, I like that. Any anybody else got any idea? Anything they want to say about that? About the um. No, as long as nothing flies in, as long as nothing flies in here. As long as they make, if it makes sense, I'm for it. I just, I just want things to make sense. I think if they had the always open weight titles, like in 205, that would really involve 205 live, like all over WWE. I, I know Vince isn't probably going to do it because he doesn't like six man tags a lot. Unless they're just yeah, yeah, but the thing is, is you. Well, I mean, look, like you have Corbin doing his shit, but then you have Corbin, or even Drew Lashley and Leo Rush win them, you know, or AOP and Drake Maverick win them. I mean, you see what I mean? Like you, you can just have one cruiserweight guy, but you could have him going all over WWE doing shit. Right. I mean, obviously, Lucha House Party would win them. 
Mm-hmm. And by the, by the way, Anthony, I got to ask you, is it just me or is, is does it look like the ring has to like, does it look like the ring needs to catch up to Grand Metalik? <laughs> Grand Metal League just like owns that ring. I don't care what anybody says. Like he. What are you talking about? It looks like the he's not doing moves in the ring. It looks like the move, the ring is moving to keep up with him. Like it looks like he's doing like a 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 I think I think it would have been better off having Metal League winning because I mean TJP after his title run he's really done next to nothing. So I mean we'll see where it, where, where it leads up for him though. But um let's go ahead and get our start here. We started off. When did we start off with again? <laughs> I, I I'm terrible with this when I when I when I get ready to start something it was like everything that I thought I had in my head like, like leaves my head for some odd reason. Are we just doing the matches or are you wanting the fucking backstage? Uh, I'll I'll cover the backstages after we cover the matches. But I, I can't remember I can't remember who um. Oh, I, I I remember now. Today was Hami and uh, Arya Devaru in the ring, and Arya Devaru was trying to get the crowd to respect Today was Hami. Out comes Noam Dar. We get a match between Noam Dar and Hideo Itami. Really, really, really solid match from Hideo Itami and Noam Dar. But Noam Dar was able to pull out the win with the finisher that I had no idea what the name of it is. Yeah. I don't know the name of that finisher is, but I like it. Well, what's his name called it? Uh, the Guinness called it a uh, falling knee strike. I mean, that was just the basic name of it. Like, it's, that's it's a falling knee strike. Mm-hmm. I, I found I saw somewhere it was like the call it was called a GTS two point or something like that. It's like uh, it's, <laughs> to me, it looked like like a it looked like a single knee face breaker. Uh, but what you got? That was a face lock. That was like a reverse face lock into a, a face break. Yeah, I, I don't know where I saw it, but somebody somebody called it the GTS 2.0. That was definitely that was definitely a single D free. <laughs> now you want to talk about GTS 2.0? We'll talk about the GTS 2.0 later on tonight. All right, on to the second match of the night. Some random jobber that I could care less what his name was took on the man of the hour, that man of the hour, Leo Rush. And um, again, another solid, another solid uh squash match. Leo Rush definitely looked very vicious here. Um, a lot more vicious than he than you would see on Monday night. So, if you want to see the main streak of Leo Rush in, in that in work, two or five lives would be place to go for that. Any thoughts there? Um. <laughs> hey, Anthony. Yeah. I've got to give it to Leo Rush. I like that leg trip to actually just completely dominate after that. Yeah. And he gets a lot of air. He gets a lot of air on his frog splashes. I think... Out of everybody that's actively in the WWE right now, I don't think anybody has a better frog splash than Leo Rush. You know what his frog splash reminds me of? Who? Like Ruff Van Damme. I I am willing to say, and this might be a reach in some people up some people's eyes, but this is just me saying this. You can debate me here. I don't care. But I am willing to say that Leo Rush. I think his frost splash edges out RVDs. Yes, it is. Yeah, it is. I totally agree. He probably has the best frost splash in the WWE. Even though Rob Van Dam's was like, 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 because he was a, you know, he was kind of a heavyweight, like leaning towards a heavyweight. <laughs> Leo Rush gets that air. Rob Van, I mean, Eddie and one of the others never got that air time that 
that he got. I mean, they could do it across the ring, but Rob Van Dam got air with that thing. I don't think Eddie's. I don't think Eddie's is designed to get air on it. Yeah, I don't. Rob, Rob was. Eddie, yeah, Rob was air had air. Leo gets good air time on his. Eddie is didn't have a, a lot of air moving. But then again, Eddie Eddie was more of a technical luchador as it was, so he wasn't really somebody that you expected to go be like be all the way up in the air. He wasn't he wasn't a grand metal elite type of wrestler, especially late within his career. I, I'm not too sure about early in his career, but I know when I was watching no, Eddie Guerrero. His career, he didn't even get that. Chavo got some air time. But oh yeah, Chavo. Nearly as... go ahead. Yeah, I agree with Chavo there. He got more air, but. Even Chavo, still, Chavo didn't get RVD or Leo Rush air. No, Leo Rush, man, he got some good air time. Like, this man just jumps into it. And, you know, like I said, Leo Rush doesn't have the impact that RVD did because RVD was a bigger dude. Yeah. <laughs> but he, gets, he makes it look hellacious with that air time. And the only reason RVD got so high up because he was already high as it was. Yeah, he was. Yeah, Jeff Hardy and RVD were the two greatest high flyers. Shut up. <laughs> yeah, I like Seth. And then I, I definitely got to give Kevin Owens his props, too. Yeah, but see, like, Seth, Seth kind of, like, like elevates his body to look more hair than he is. He almost had a play of a theatric. Yeah. I mean, that is something that we can really, like, just have, like, a nice little poll session with, like, just, and I think I'm going to do that tomorrow. Um, see, I'm going to just throw, I'm going to just throw random polls around random groups to see who they feel like has the best frog splash. You know who else had a beautiful frog splash? Who? Christian. Yeah. 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 You know who else has a great frog splash? AJ Styles. No. Yes, there we go. <laughs> I was waiting for somebody to see it. That man fires like a bullet out of his. his yeah. Doesn't get as much air, but he fires like a bullet with his. Yeah, I love Tanahashi's. I'm amazed uh, Nash at him like immediately. I was surprised Donovan didn't say it. You know, Donovan is I like. Say him because he's not, he doesn't get the. He doesn't get like the the really crazy ones anymore. I think. It's like he's like trying to reserve now for, but then again, I mean he's the he's up there. But no, at Wrestle Kingdom, I guarantee you, we're gonna get one of those fucking like oh ball ones that he does. definitely. And um, I might, I just might be able to watch Wrestle Kingdom live. Anthony, please do the live stream with us, please. Come on, it'll just be us. All right, I it, I, I got I got to make sure I have uh, enough uh, stuff okay. to keep myself awake. It literally will be us, though. Like, nobody else is getting involved. Yeah, everybody knows. Everybody knows why we're not doing those group things anymore. Too many people, dog. Yeah. Too much. Too much background. That's what that was. I mean, I'm being honest. Grandpa Sanahashi. <laughs> Hell, my man, y'all need to get the fuck up out of here. This hey, Jamie said it. Don't get on me. Don't shoot the messenger. Tanahashi is the greatest wrestler in the ring today. And say Grandpa Tanahashi. I'm weak. I'm done. But I'm is he not. better than El Idolo? Hey, guys. Oh, my God. I uh, forgot to mention who had a nice box bus. Who? Oh, my gosh. Why did I not realize that? And I, look, uh, fun fact. Fun fact. When I was growing up, my nickname was D-Lo Brown. This is before I met Isaac, too. And that's, uh, that's why I was still Leo. I was still stuck. Who said Grandpa Tanahashi? Was that Jamie? Jamie. <laughs> Jamie? Wow. So, wow. I don't want hey. to hear it. Be, go, you know what? Go watch your Never Open Weight match with like that intergender and Never Open Weight title match with like the fucking female Kota Bushi trying to cut her hair short. Hey, Jamie's throwing shots up here. He was like, he called me Stuttering Ant. I can see that. And you know what? Now that you say that, it makes a lot of sense because if you look at the way he does his frog splash, 
the only person, that, only other person I know that did it the way he extent, like he went all the way in, was D'Lo Brown. Because like when he does it, his hands go all the way behind him, like through his legs all the way behind him, and then he comes back and extends. That's, but D'Lo, that's one reason D'Lo Brown's been awesome for like a decade because he was throwing himself at people. I mean, yeah, but he's I mean, yeah. But, I mean, you got to appreciate him either way. I mean, look, I, I, I'm a huge fan of D'Lo Brown. I will say this. I like Tamahashi's better because he has a dope name that goes with it. High Fly Flow? Yes, that's a dope name. I mean, that, that is a dope name. Speaking of dopeness, oh, my God.